What's up everybody, I am Sage with Shabar Jello and today we're getting rich in Australia. That's right, we're playing the Outback Tycoon scenario on DD difficulty. Now if you are new to the channel, this is part of an ongoing series where I play all of the Civ 6 scenarios at the highest difficulty level and prove that they are way too fucking easy. So if you're looking for like a guide or a strategy to help you beat these yourself, you're in the right place. But if you're looking for me to just abuse this game and make it look stupid, you're also in the right place. Previously we managed to beat Yadviga's Legacy while trying to lose it and we beat Gifts of the Nile by sheer accident, honestly. So, this time to make sure it's not too easy, we're gonna add an extra challenge to it. Normally in the Apex Tycoon scenario, you would set up districts, upgrade them with buildings, and trade with your neighbors to get all the gold per turn that you possibly can. But we're not gonna do any of that. We have banned districts, we've banned trade routes, and we only have 60 turns to go down under and find a way to make enough money to win the game. So why don't you grab yourself a drink, kick your feet up, and like this video, and find out if we can indeed get rich in Australia. So, first up, we have to pick a civilization to play as, uh, well, I guess, premier, uh, mascot. We'll call them mascots. And we're going to pick the Wombat because, of course, I mean, look at this guy, he's cute as fuck. And I don't think there's enough of a difference between any of them to really matter. Dropping right in, we need to find a good location to set up our first city. So, we're going to send one unit up north around all of Australia and one south and try to circle the whole continent. We want to find a good coastal tile with a lot of resources. That way we can make money off of them since we can't build districts. It'll be very important to start in a strong location. We have set up our first city and it might not be the perfect spot, but it does have a lot of fishing so we can make some money off of that and grow our population. It's important to know that all of these settlers in this scenario will spawn in our capital. And since we cannot build trade routes or roads, the walking speed across the continent would be very slow. But this way they can just drop into the water where their move speed would be a lot better. We also got our second settler, so we have to find a good spot to drop them down. And we unlocked government, so we gotta pick a policy- well, I mean, yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna go with the, the Fisher one, obviously. I'm gonna send our second settler pretty far from our capital, to be honest. Since we can't build roads or lose loyalty in our cities, the distance between them doesn't matter, so I'm gonna just try to find a good spot for our second city. Oh, but before I forget, we need to name our capital. Hell yeah, the Tasmanian Devils. I know that we are like the, the Wombat team, but I mean, what is a Tasmanian Devil if not an evil twin to the Wombat? Besides, Tasmanian Devils are fucking rad as hell. And as far as our second city, we will name it Platypus Egg, because the platypus lays eggs and has venom, like it's some sort of weird otter snake hybrid. And it's just ridiculous, and I think more people need to know that. So this is a PSA that the platypus lays eggs. You're welcome. And we've also gotten the Gold Rush Civic, which will reveal gold on the map, which is great, so we need to find where that is. But it also gets us two settlers, because the way the scenario works is the settlers you get are tied directly to the civics you research. So I'm going to specifically chase down the civics that give me settlers, so I can get those cities up and running as fast as possible. I mean, we're not out here to fuck spiders, all right? We're here to get rich. And to do that, we need to know what we're working with, so we gotta get these cities up and running. So, let's drop one right here next to the Great Barrier Reef, since that gives us a bonus to science, which is very nice since we cannot build districts. Um, we just, we need a name for it. What if we name it after, like a, like a very smart Australian, since it is a city of science, after all? <laughs> Paul Hogan, a man known for his great intelligence when it comes to identifying cutlery. He's got a knife. <laughs> Knife. That's a knife. Uh, and then we'll put a city over here, where we have some good mining resources that'll be sure to make us some money, as well as, you know, cattle and food and things. Now we need a name for it. I mean, maybe we should name a city after the Wombat. It is our mascot, after all. Like, maybe Wombat Devil? Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of like Tasmanian Devil. That's too similar. Um, oh! Wombat God! Hell yeah! It really illustrates the duality between little Australian guys, you know? It is now turn 30, so let's check back in and see how our country of Wombatlia is doing. We need 1,000 gold per turn to win the scenario, and currently we are sitting at... Ah, fuck. Alright, well, 14 isn't great, but I think, honestly, that's... That's on track. I think we're doing okay. We still have 30 turns to make up the other Minus 986. That's plenty of time. Don't worry, don't panic. We've got this. Well, hello, this is Sage currently editing the video from the future, but now the past, which is also the f Anyway, ignore that, ignore that. What I want to ask isn't 
do I beat the scenario? Because obviously I do. I wouldn't put the video out if I'm going to ask it. Come on, let's be real. What I want to ask is, do you know how I managed to do it at this point? Because clearly I'm way behind. I'm like a one-legged man in an asking contest. Like, how do you think I managed to pull this off? Because I do. Is it by building more improvements? Do I cave in and set up some districts? Or do I invent an Australian stock market to invest in Vegemite and take over the entire continent? Let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, we have set up some new cities, so we need some new names. So let's call this one Kangaroo Jack. The perfect, because, you know, my man's got drip, what can I say? And then over here, we will name this one, uh... Koala? Yeah, I mean, why not? Shout out to my smooth brains, let's go. Yep. World War One. what the fuck's that gotta do with me? I'm a thousand miles away over here. <sighs> whatever. Now that it has turned 45 out of 60, and we are halfway from the last time that we were halfway, yeah, let's check in and see how we're doing. It's time for a shareholder meeting, if you will. Ladies, gentlemen, marsupials, I would like to report that we have driven our profits sky high and have risen them by 200%, which gives us 48 point... Two out of a thousand. Fuck. All right. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. Yeah, no, that could uh, that could that could be better, but it could be worse. It's okay. Um, we have 15 turns to make up the other uh, 952. Shit. It's all right. We will drop down what is probably going to be the final city of this scenario, and we need a name for it. Now, on the last video, a regulation comment leaver said that I should name a city Egypt next. And since that was a video about Egypt, it made perfect sense. But this is a video about Australia, which means it's even funnier now, so here you go. We are now on turn 52 out of 60, the final eight turns of the game. So I suppose now is as good a time as any to reveal our grand strategy. You see, we did not need districts or trade routes or even the improvements, to be honest. All we needed was one simple thing. World War II. You see, World War II is important because it boosts the benefit of doing the AIF project. From World War I, you only get 10 gold per turn for completing it, but now you get 20 gold per turn. And since we have eight cities, if we can complete it just eight times in each one, we would succeed in our goal of becoming the richest man in Wombat Leo. Now I know what you're thinking. But Sage, how could you possibly complete that eight times in every single city? There's only eight turns left. You don't have the production for that. There's just not enough time. Oh, contraire, mon ami, I have been planning this since the beginning, and I've already set up a way to do it. You see, I used the policy's ticket of leave to get 30 bonus production towards grazers, upgraded that to mounted stockmen to get two extra build actions for them, and then threw in colonial architects to get one bonus production in all of my cities. Utilizing all of that, I have built myself an army. But even building all those Outback stations would only give you two gold and one production a turn. That won't work. Oh, we're not building Outback stations. We're cutting down the forests. God, the Lorax would fucking hate me right now. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. So back at the beginning of the game, where I circled all of Australia looking for a good place to settle my cities, I was not looking for resources like I led you to believe. While those are a benefit, I was looking for trees. And as you can see, I planted my cities around those trees. So now for this phase of the game, it is very easy to make money off of chopping them all down. This amount of deforestation kind of makes me feel bad. It's like the civilization equivalent of picking the mean dialogue option. Now, with just two turns remaining, we've nearly broken 900 gold per turn. That is a comeback story if I ever heard one. Now, I thought on DD you needed 1,000 per turn, but the internet claims it's only 900, so we've beaten it with two turns of spare. That's pretty cool. I guess now we just try to crank up that score as much as we can for the next two turns and see what happens. Final turn, and we managed to get to 1,280.6 gold per turn. Not too bad. But in all my villainous monologuing earlier, I totally forgot to name one of our cities. There we are, a name fitting someone who would cut down all of these trees and forests just to get rich. Really hit the nail on the head with that one. That will also claim our victory, which means it's bean time. From our humble beginnings ages ago. I hope you all enjoyed the video half as much as I enjoyed making it, because trust me I did. Now let's go check out our scores and see how we did. Our score, yep, it uh, it skyrocketed right about turn... 52 or so when World War II started and our gold is all over the place real highs and lows uh yeah you gotta you gotta spend money to make money you know 
and we made the most money giving us the top rank of Augustus Caesar. And all it took was a war, exploitation, burning down forests. You know, it's almost like getting obscenely rich is unethical or something. Well, anyway, until next time, see you later. Yep. So normally this is the part where I hype up the next video or say like, subscribe, share, you know, that kind of stuff, whatever. That's not important right now. But what is important? The little guys. Many of them are threatened or endangered or have vastly declining populations. So I'm going to put some links in the description of ways to help or just if you want to learn more, you know, and doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can have an impact. But I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Get your hand off my penis! <laughs>